He's never told me about that conversation. Seriously, I mean, this is new. I don't remember, a lot of people saw me the day of, the prior to, because our flight got delayed and so. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, I'm gonna read, because I'm mentally incompetent, but um, I, I'll, I just want to thank you all for being here today. Um, um, I, uh, I've attended may, many uh, retail Christian networks uh, meetings before uh, out at uh, ICSC and uh, in uh, Las Vegas and as well as in the desert out in, we had in Palm Springs. We had them, we've had them pretty much everywhere. And so it's been, been wonderful to at least be with you all in the past. And forgive me for I forget some of your people's names, but that's still this, still working. But uh, I've been asked here today on how God has touched my life and uh, through healing me and redirecting my focus uh, to hit further involvement in God. Um, I was a pretty strong believer before the uh, crash, but um, I changed a little bit. I'm standing here because of God's massive network that came through uh, to help me survive. Uh, many of people days I ask, why me? Why did I survive? There were other wonderful God-loving guys on the airplane that didn't make it. I'm not here to tell you how bitchin' I am. I'm just blessed. Uh, my faith has grown every day uh, since I committed to Christ's guidance at age 12. Uh, my wife, Diane, now called St. Diane, uh, was raised Presbyterian. I was raised Baptist. We started at uh, Bayshore Church uh, when our ch first child was born and have been there ever since. Uh, it's a local church in Long Beach. Um, when I started, uh, uh, I started at a tribesman as well as at a YMCA Indian Princesses, uh, also known as uh, now Adventure Guys, politically correct. I've been creating great friends with uh, another chief by the name of Mark Bixby, and he was also a fellow Rotarian, and we did lots of work for Camp Oaks up in Big Bear. I don't know if you've been up there, but it's a great little camp. Uh, Mark convinced me to continue uh, to bicycle more passionately with the Long Beach Freddies, and a uh, Freddy is a guy that thinks he's a good bike rider, and it's what the pros call a bike rider who thinks he's a good bike rider, but he's not, so I'm, I'm a, I was a Freddy. <clears throat> we were in shape. Our friendships developed into a professional relationship where he decided to join us at Pacific Retail Partners, um, and uh, he was just a great partner and great friend to me and to Mark Shenuda, who knew him well. Uh, during the relationship, uh, we became uh, close with uh, uh, some business partners that I was doing work with, uh, Jeff Berger and Tom Dean, and uh, we decided uh, that we're going to go to Utah on a business trip. We had uh, two financial guys come in, um, an attorney, and uh, all our lives changed uh, considerably on March 16, 2011, as uh, Perry addressed earlier. I still can't believe it. I don't, didn't, don't remember that call. We were uh, off to go to, to ski in Utah and conduct business on a, uh, a very safe airplane in the sky called a Beechcraft King Air 200 turboprop. Uh, we had flown the same plane on several business trips throughout uh, Western United States uh, trying to make uh, different deals and it had always been uh, very efficient. Uh, as we uh, climbed out uh, over Long Beach, 500 feet off the air, the left engine went and uh, the pilot, Ken Cruz, who was reported as uh, pilot error, uh, was not pilot error because he got the airplane just about back to the runway, uh, but exploded on contact at 200 miles an hour into the ground. Um, the NTPSB was wrong due to several uh, budget cuts. Uh, they could not even track down the guy who maintained the airplane to even prove that it was uh, anything in wrong with the, uh, the, the pilot or the engine. Uh, my stepfather, Bill Weaver, flew this plane all the time uh, through Lockheed executives all over Southern California. He was a, a chief engineer and test pilot for Lockheed on the LTEL 11 project. Uh, prior to that, he flew the SR-71 uh, and crashed it over New Mexico at 83,000 feet. He bailed out at plus Mach 3. Mach 1 is the speed of sound, so it's three times the uh, speed of sound. Parts of the engine uh, airplane were spread over 27 miles and he safely ejected and he always told me uh, because he survived he always told me mike if you're having a plane crash crunch 
and you guys have probably seen it uh, in your whatever commercial planes. They've always got something like this. If you look at my injuries that have happened to me, for some reason it looks like that's what I did, and maybe that's why I loved. <clears throat> what I experienced uh, and how prayer from others uh, are all answers from God who helped me survive what some call a miracle. Uh, the Great Long Beach Fire Department uh, rescued me at the burning wreckage quickly. They had just been on a training run up the 405 freeway and just coming off Cherry as the airplane went down. So all they got all green lights going to the airport and the because they had just left on a training run, the uh, access into the airport was wide open. They got there into, into the crash scene less than five minutes and uh, there happened to be an ambulance on site and they immediately uh, got everybody, went, went to the airplane and went, were going to go spray foam on it to get, suffocate the fire. And they, for some reason, a God thing, sprayed water on the airplane and that suffocated it. And uh, thank God uh, they found me. They, they found me face down in the fuselage uh, with uh, my neck cut wide open and my mouth full of metal and glass. I was still breathing out of this side of my neck. And we said, we got a breather. So they pulled me out of the airplane, threw me in the ambulance that just happened to be on the airplane, I mean, on the airport at the time, threw me in the air, uh, ambulance, got me back to uh, Memorial Hospital. Um, <clears throat> and they uh, spent 30 hours uh, getting uh, this side that was all burnt and this side that was all broken, uh, sustained to some, how they could transport me to UCI, which was a burn center. They filled me with 30 uh, pints of uh, fluid um, and the community was huge uh, because there were so many people involved in the airplane that were uh, known in Long Beach. Uh, the outpouring and love that came was amazing. We had over 600 pints of uh, uh, blood donated uh, during the first uh, two days I was uh, in the accident. <clears throat> Firefighters, I uh, ran through that, da da da. And thank you, God. I don't remember any of it. Uh, the team loaded me, as, as I said earlier. Perry, this one thing I couldn't remember anything. The last thing I remembered was taking my daughter to Disneyland on her 12th birthday, excuse me, on March 12th. Um, and that was four days before the clash. I got a deal approved at the city council. I stood up in front of, went on bike rides, saw all sorts of people, don't remember any of that stuff prior to it. So thank God my brain got scrubbed. Uh, Seatbelt seat injury uh, opened me up from uh, my pelvis to my cervix. Uh, eight inches of intestine were uh, wasted. Um, and um, my back, neck, neck, my stomach, shoulders, collarbone, wrists, knees, and ankles were all broken. Um, once the surgery was finished, Dr. Sanat Bernal at UCI went ahead and uh, administered uh, all the surgeries for me to recover uh, all my burns. And uh, after 28 surgeries, I was finally stabilized enough where they just started uh, rehabbing me. And um, Jeff Sear uh, came to help Doug out. My brother was always there uh, with Diane. And uh, he, he says, I remember visiting you with Dougie when you were at the UCI Burn Center and we were given the task of working you out. No fun. We had to have you respond around bondi bending, stretching, and flexing your legs to keep your muscles from atrophying. Your wounds were still healing, so it was painful for you and to us. Tears continued to come from your eyes and screaming, which in turn made it very emotional. For us, that was hard to be done. Through all this time, the prayers of uh, Long Beach Bayshore Church, um, Caring Bridge, uh, Long Beach residents and others continued to help me and my family get through what had happened to me. Uh, what I experienced was truly a miracle, uh, which is, uh, according to Webster's Dictionary, an extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. Needless to say, I believe in miracles. I'm also thankful for the 3,200 uh, prayers that were received and documented by a, a group called Caring Bridge. If you ever have somebody that uh, uh, goes through anything like this, get them hooked up with Caring Bridge because it helps educate everybody that wants to call and find out about John 
or whoever, and what it did is it allowed my wife to focus on, my daughter to focus on me versus having to answer any things, and uh, it was a great service. <clears throat> During the uh, end of my surgery at UCI, I gradually became somewhat lucid. As I lay there, the memories were, what happened to me? What did I do? <clears throat> and they kept telling me, it wasn't your fault. I don't know why I'm still aware uh, of why I was in the hospital, what had happened. I, I thought I, I had two separate phone calls, one from Jeff Berger, who was on the airplane with me, and one from Mark Bixby. And they both said, they will see me and be at rest. You'll be okay. Why I had that in my mind, either the drugs were really good or it was a God thing. I think it was a God thing. God was reaching me out through these two men that were in heaven. As it became more or less, I continued pressure to my wife. What happened to me? Due to my condition, the doctors didn't want me upset. Finally, through all my persistence that I've been known to have, Diane told me what happened. And needless to say, I cried all day. Um, and I kept asking over and over, honey, why did Mark call me? Why did Jeff call me? And why I knew that, I don't know, a God thing. I was continually supported by my loving friends and family. Um, surgery and therapy was done at UCI and finally they sent me off to Memorial Hospital, the rehab department, where I started working every little step of the day. I could barely talk, I could barely think, but it was just a gradual rehabilitation for Memorial. I got back into Memorial and my bikes that I ride with, uh, all the Freddies had a big banner waiting for me that said, you're weak. Your weak was frequently called out as some of you bicycle riders know, as you're riding with a group and you're falling back behind, they come back and give you crap and say you're weak. Well, I was uh, finally there. One of the great things that was passages was printed um, on the back of it, I mean, on the, on the front of it, was uh, verse 2 Corinthians 12.10. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I'm weak, I am strong. And that was something that was always right there in my face, and it's helped me grow uh, back into somewhat some strength. I was in a day with love and prayer uh, from that banner. Every day I was fed, showered, physical and cognitive therapy. I gradually began to talk somewhat coherently. I practiced daily uh, regaining my skills that write gradually, walk around the halls of the hospital. Um, and uh, on June 14th, they went ahead and, and sent me home uh, with the, the neighborhood signs of welcome home. And it's just amazing how the community of Long Beach came out and stood for me. Once I was home, I attended my wife, St. Diane, and my three daughters, Addie, Joanna, and Jana, and my brother, Doug, who continually uh, gave me showers, continued application of gallons of lotion. Um, I also wore support garments to help me reduce the swelling and the pain around my back and my body. God answered our prayers. I was then uh, transported daily to transitional rehabilitation services as a group in Long Beach that basically uh, spent uh, six hours a day, five days a week with me, teaching me to talk, teaching me to flex my muscles, keep, keeping me to walk. Um, and it, it was just a phenomenal service and stayed there for about six months. And since then, um, they've just had me continually meet with uh, uh, my burn doctor and my psychologist to try to work with my brain and get my brain back to functioning. I just knew persistence, persistence, persistence. I had to keep moving. As my daughter said, Mom, after what Dad's been through, if he survives, he will need all sorts of mental health to get him back before there was a crash. <laughs> my, middle, my medical conditions and my physiological conditions and psychological conditions continued today but it's still, at least it's improving. Uh, I continue to read the Bible daily and uh, started heading to a uh, weekly Bible study with men's group that we talked about earlier at, Bay at um, uh, Seacoast Grace out in Cyprus. And uh, just happened to be the guy who was leading. It was a guy that I skied with 14 years previously. And it was just a true God thing. Like, wait, wait a minute, God, why are you putting this guy in my life? But it's been a phenomenal uh, group that I've been uh, going to for six years. Uh, my outpatient counts continually, uh, counseling continued at home. 
Um, and the sessions ran three hours a, a week and for six months, constantly helping with my memory um, and details and improving my ability to communicate and talk and think. I hope what was my last surgery uh, was October 4th, 2016. I'm just recovering the last 28 surgeries I've had. Uh, they uh, removed scar tissue that did, I don't know, if, did we do the photos? No. Oh, we're going with photos, okay. So there, <laughs> there's, there's lots of good photos, but, um, and hopefully it's not gonna ruin your breakfast. Um, but you'll see a photo here of them removing scar tissue from me uh, that was uh, basically, this was wide open from the seatbelt accident and this, the tissue was, was wide open here, but the scar had turned into bone. And so there's a photo in here of them. That's right, that's right at the end, but these is, this is, this is pre-crash and that was a pre-crash with my daughters. That was just way back when. There's my daughters again. My wife, who's uh, St. Diane. My daughters again. And this was uh, on my great group at Pacific Retail Partners prior to the crash, riding. That wasn't so good. So don't get an airplane crash is what it boils down to. What else am I doing as you go through those? Most importantly, I, I continue to thank God. He's helping me through the pain and anguish. I'm getting stronger every day. I've chosen to live uh, my life for those guys who died. Uh, Mark Bixby was a great friend, as uh, Mark Shenouda knows, and um, he had just created a vision to rebuild the cabins at YMCA Camp, YMCA, yeah, YMCA Camp Oaks up in Big Bear. And Mark and I loved it so much that uh, we'd always spend days up there at Venture Guys and Rotary Camp Enterprise and uh, reforestation projects. But Mark served on the board of directors. And so after the accident, I was asked to go ahead and step in and try to finish his vision. Uh, thankfully, we just uh, finished building five cabins, new cabins up at Camp Oaks. And uh, we're now trying to finish the last $2 million of fundraising to uh, rehab the remaining part of Camp Oaks so that it's gonna be brought back into the, the um, a, a better condition than built in the 1950s. Uh, this will allow more kids to come to Long Beach and experience the great outdoors uh, with God by their side. Allowing them to connect with that nature at the mountains is an opportunity to just be a playful kid. I believe this will help youth understand how important God is in our lives. The Camp Oaks Project gives me hope to carry on Mark's legacy. When we are finished, we'll serve over 3,500 kids per year out of Long Beach, most of which have never been outside of Long Beach. God gave me more time. I'm here to serve. Thank you.